Hello and welcome to today's video, Addition and Subtraction Number Stories. First, let's talk about some important vocabulary and vocabulary terms you will need to know to understand today's lesson. Our first vocabulary term today is number sentence, and this is basically two expressions with a relation symbol. So both of these expressions down below are number sentences, and they're different kinds of number sentences, but here's what's important. This is what's known as a relation symbol. The addition symbols are what is known as operation symbols. Some other relationship symbols are greater than, less than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, anything that compares two sides of your number sentence to each other. As I said, these addition symbols are operation symbols, so they show what operation is happening within the number sentence. You can also use the subtraction symbol, the multiplication symbol, or the division symbol as operation symbols. Now, as I said earlier, both of these number sentences are different kinds of number sentences, and now we're going to talk about what kinds they are. This first one is what's known as a true number sentence simply because it's true. 75 does equal 25 plus 50. The second number sentence is what's known as a false number sentence because it's not true. 8 does not equal 5 plus 5, so this one is a false number sentence. There is a third kind of number sentence, and it's called an open number sentence. And it is a number sentence with one or more variables. An open number sentence is neither true nor false because there is a variable in there that could make it go either way. In the case of all three of these number sentences, these are the variables. These are letters or symbols that represent a number. We don't know what that number is yet because we haven't solved the problem, which is why it's called a variable. Our final vocabulary word for today is solution. A solution is a value or values for the variable or variables in an open sentence that makes the sentence true. For example, if we wanted to find a solution for this bottom problem here, we could say that x equals 3 and y equals 4. Both of these numbers, when plugged in for the x and the y in the open number sentence, would make that number sentence true because 3 plus 4 does in fact equal 7. So now we're going to practice actually solving addition and subtraction number stories. And we're going to start out by using this word problem below. Um, and then we're going to try one more after that just as some extra practice before I give you your practice problem of the day. So this problem says, the school library has 486 fiction books and 321 nonfiction books. How many books does the library have in all? So this is really a five-step process. I need to first, ident first identify which numbers from the word problem I'm going to need to use. And in this case, it's pretty simple to identify those because I only have two numbers listed in my problem. But sometimes you'll have more than that and you won't need to use them all. So this is an important step to always take when you're solving number stories. So the two um, numbers that I'm going to be using from this word problem are 486 and 321. Next, I need to look back at the number story and really think about what it is I need to find. And what I'm really looking for here is how many books the library has in all. The third step is to write an open number sentence that will help me solve this problem. My open number sentence for this one is going to look like this. 486 plus 321 equals B, and for me, B is going to stand for books. You can use any letter you want when you put your variable in, but you have to have a variable in there somewhere because we have to have something that we can solve throughout this problem. Next, I'm going to write down my solution. I'm going to actually take 486 and add 321 to it, and when I do that, I'm going to come out with 807 equals B. Now this is just my solution. This is not the actual answer to the problem. The answer to the problem is actually going to be 807 books because that's what the original question was asking me. So let's try one more problem using these five steps to solving number stories. Mrs. Snow is 49 years old. 
Her son, Kevin, is celebrating his 24th birthday today. Mr. Snow is six years older than Mrs. Snow. How old was Mrs. Snow when Kevin was born? This is one of those problems I was telling you about on the last slide where I told you that you wouldn't always have to use all of the numbers in uh, these problems. So let's look and think about which numbers are really important. We need to know that Mrs. Snow is 49 years old. We do need to know that her son Kevin is 24. What we don't need to know, what doesn't matter to this question, is that Mr. Snow is six years older than Mrs. Snow. So we are going to totally ignore that number because it has no bearing in the problem at all. The next thing we're going to do is think about what it is that we're trying to answer here. And what we're really looking for is how old was Mrs. Snow when Kevin was born? That's the important information and that's what our solution and our answer are going to be about. Next, I am going to write an open number sentence that will help me solve this problem. So I'm going to write 49, which is Mrs. Snow's age, and we're going to subtract 24 from that to figure out how old Kevin was when, or how old Mrs. Snow was when Kevin was born, and I'm going to use an M for my variable this time. When I go through and do my subtraction, I can see that Mrs. Snow was 25, and that's what gonna, is going to equal M. And remember, that is just our solution. That's not quite the answer yet. So next, I'm going to write my answer out as 25 years old. And that's my final answer. Here is your practice problem of the day. At breakfast, the temperature was 47 degrees Fahrenheit. By lunchtime, the temperature had gone up to 63 degrees Fahrenheit. How many degrees warmer was it by lunchtime? Don't forget to follow all five steps to solve this problem. They are Number one, identify the numbers you will use. Number two, describe what it is that you want to find. Number three, write an open number sentence which uses a variable. Remember that a variable is a letter or a symbol that you put into a problem to represent a missing number. Number four, find the missing number in the open sentence. This is also known as the solution. Remember, this is not the final answer that you will be expressing. And finally, number five, write the answer to the story. Good luck.